I'm Stephanie Wallcraft, and thank you for joining us here at Electric Autonomy Canada. Today, we'll be speaking with representatives from Lion Electric, a Quebec-based builder of electric school buses, and TransDev Canada. TransDev is an international mobility provider regarding their deal to have TransDev purchase 27 electric school buses for the Quebec market from Lion Electric. We're joined by Patrick Gervais, Vice President of Marketing and Communications for Lion Electric, and Pierre Zivek, Vice President of Performance and Project Director for Electrification for TransDev Canada. Thanks to both of you for joining us today. Pierre, from, from TransDev's side, what this, this deal took your, your um, company's electric school bus fleet across Canada from four buses to 31. That's quite an aggressive um, single transaction growth. So can you explain a little bit more about um, why such an aggressive strategy on this? Mm -hmm. Um, how it is that um, that TransDev landed with Lion Electric as uh, the the preferred vendor for this project? Um, so, so we are we are strongly committed to uh, the electromobility as as a company. Um, the the choice uh, here in, in Canada and and, uh, and and specifically in Quebec is related to three uh, three main elements. The first one is that uh, Quebec has a clean energy. Uh, which is a key component on, on the efficiency of an electric mode. Uh, the second one is, and I'm going to tell you why, a, a local manufacturer. That's quite a key and, <laughs> and uh, that's, that's important. I will tell you why. And the third one, uh, and you, uh, uh, you, you, we will probably discuss about that, is the political uh, strategy uh, here in Quebec of, uh, of incentive. Uh, I must say that worldwide electric buses uh, whichever type you're talking about are quite expensive in capital, uh, which is a, is a sometime a, a question for companies. So having the three alignments uh, between a manufacturer, uh, a, a clean energy and a policy, locally political involvement uh, uh, makes it feasible. Um, how, how do we reach uh, 31 from four? Uh, as as a, a, a major um, uh, company uh, and transporter, we have to renew a portion of our fleet every year. And, uh, and the question for us last year, because we started discussing last year and doing our calculation was, okay, is it now the time to switch from, from a, a pure diesel fleet to electric? And, and, and it comes uh, to me very quickly that it was very efficient in Quebec. It was very good for, for the kids. I mean, we have to think of all the positive impact of having electric buses for kids. Uh, you must, must have noticed that uh, school buses are often uh, parked in front of schools waiting for the kids to come. You can see the difference between a diesel and, and an electric. And then we were working for the last uh, three years with Lyon. We, we had those four buses. And we were quite in good relation because it was at that time uh, one of the first buses, uh, pro one of the first bus produced for school bus in 2016, 2017. So we have this uh, great relationship. So uh, going from four to 37, how you do it? Well, you purchase 27 bus. Uh, but <laughs> technically what you do is that you transfer some of your assets uh, to release some availability and then you renew what was supposed to be renewing diesel uh, in electric. Uh, that are the main three points, a, a local manufacturer, clean energy, and political support. Just to speak to the, the uh, clean energy in Quebec, because that's, that's a frequent talking point when we're talking about electrification strategies in Quebec. Um, Transdev has stated for the Quebec market a goal of having 100% electric um, buses by 2025. Um, and so can you just expand a little on um, what sort of emissions reduction we'd be looking at, um, particularly regarding the energy um, production being largely hydroelectric? I'm, I'm proud uh, here in Canada that Quebec has one of the cleanest energy in the world. So uh, it's about 4.5 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour produced. So uh, the reduction uh, technically is a reduction between a diesel and an electric on the road, I'm always talking on the road, uh, is about 99%. Uh, 
of efficiency and reduction. You still have a little bit of, um, I must admit, you still have a little bit of, of, um, of emission, especially in winter, because you know that that's all about the story of how you hit a bus, and we have kids in the bus, so we need to hit the bus. But it's very, very, very small portion. So the, the figures is 99% reduction of, of uh, the, the CO2 emission and the pollution. And locally, I would say zero emission 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. Um, so uh, that, that's, that's about our strategy, our goal. Uh, we have uh, multiple dozens of buses to purchase over the next uh, four years to reach this target, uh, but it's, it's, it's achievable as long as the equation uh, remains the same in terms of, uh, of uh, um, model, uh, economical model and uh, capacity of production and so on. Great. Patrick, from your side, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Lion Electric's buses. Tell us about the, the range, the, the capacity, um, and how the school bus model particularly lends itself to electric transportation because of the way that school buses are used regularly. Sure. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Lion, Lion Electric, we were founded in 2011, actually in 2008, and then in 2011, we started to develop electric already. Uh, and in 2016, we've put on the on the road our first uh, all electric uh, school buses. So it's almost five years now. So we have lots of experience. Um, our buses are, are made out of composite, so they're really lighter. And then uh, what we wanted to do is look at the uh, propulsion. And then uh, our president and founder decided to go all electric. Uh, you know, in in 2011, everyone thought he was crazy at, at that time. And uh, now, I mean, uh, we proved it wrong, and then we, uh, you know, we have 100% uh, electric school buses on the road. We wanted to start with, elect with, with school buses because we thought that it was, you know, a perfect application for electric because, you know, you, they're being used, uh, you know, a certain amount of time a day, you know, and if needed, you would uh, be able to uh, plug and charge, uh, you know, in, in mid-afternoon and then redo your routes again. Um, we started, uh, you know, four years ago, almost five years ago, with 100 kilometers uh, buses. Now, our, we could do up to 250 kilometers with our school buses. So it's uh, quite amazing. Um, a lot of people, you know, are, are thinking that uh, uh, heavy-duty uh, electrification of transportation it's going to be in five years from now, but it's happening now, and then and we have the experience to do so. Uh, so um, you know, it's there, it's available, it works, and then. We uh, strongly highlight that what Transev has done by purchasing 27 buses because, you know, first it shows that they're a leader in, in their industry. And, and it also proves that, you know, electrification, it's a viable business model at the same time. So, uh, you know, and it also has, you know, like uh, Pierre was saying, a big impact on the environment because we save about uh, 23 tons of GHG uh, per year per bus which equals about five cars that were taken off the road. And um, at the same time, uh, it, it's for the children, for the health of the children, uh, because of the development of their lungs, they don't, they don't have to breathe the diesel emissions. And then also because there's no noise pollution, they're really quiet, the children are more calm when they go to school. So it's an amazing uh, product uh, and then uh, quite excited to be part of this and uh, Lion is really happy to have developed some great buses for that. Excellent. This is a $4.5 million deal, according to the press release, which, uh, which you know, I'm sure is significant. Can you shed some light on just how significant this, this deal is for Lion as a company and at this stage in its, in its development? It's obvious, obviously, for us, it's, it, helps, it, it helps us out because, you know, if a, a company, you know, worldwide, really well known like trends that is moving forward with the purchase of 27 buses obviously will help us out you know to make people understand that uh, it is viable and and it is working and and it's it could yeah maybe it could be good for them we strongly hope that this will uh, influence other companies and other transportation across the, uh, the north america to do the same thing great pierre can you speak to um the ways in which Lion Electric as a Canadian company came to the fore, um, maybe in, in terms of product offering and also in terms of how 
um, as you alluded to earlier, selecting a Canadian manufacturer was able to provide some, some benefit to you in the purchase. Well, you, you have obviously at least two points which are major on working with a, a Canadian, uh, and in this case, a, a, a Quebec for Quebec. The first one I would say is proximity. Uh, it's quite important when you go in this direction, and we've been through on the last three years, that uh, you do not have thousands of electric school bus on the road yet. It's not like if we've been existing, existing for 50 years. So one of the uh, major uh, advantage of working with Lyon is that we just have to cross the Saint Laurent to be able to meet uh, one way or the other. And, and uh, that brings us a, a capacity to exchange in terms of, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, but I'm not here to talk about engineering, but we are the operator. So uh, it's true that uh, and there is, a, 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 we may discuss about that, a whole subject about management of the energy because all about electric is managing energy. And, and we have a lot to share with, 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 with Lion. So, the fact that this manufacturer is just across uh, the river, uh, it's a Quebec company, Canadian company. Uh, I must say that the, the decision has been um, uh, uh, taken uh, a certain time ago. You, you imagine that it goes through a lot of uh, analysis, but uh, in those time uh, of uh, post COVID, uh, we are also very, very happy and, and proud to support uh, local manufacturing as, as Transdev. And when I say local, I mean Canadian because we, we are based here in Canada. Um, the second reason is, is um, not only Canadian, but they were the first to do so. So you go with the one who knows about it. And, and I must say that, uh, uh, did we have some issue with the first buses? Of course we did, because we were, a, they were pioneer and we were there to, to move from a, a kind of first, I, I won't use the word prototype, Patrick, but I mean, at the beginning, you start to experience some stuff and, and the winter condition and the, and the summer condition. And, and we have evolved through that and, and who can provide this uh, experience and, and ensure us that it will be uh, uh, very reliable because school bus, we are doing a service. So we need those buses to be reliable. And we are confident that choosing this company is, is the right choice because we already experience their buses. Uh, so that, that's two major points uh, that uh, I can add to, to the two points. A third one is that the closer you manufacture the bus, the better it is for the environment too, right? I mean, uh, so it, it makes perfect sense to work with, with Leon, uh, Lion in, uh, in, uh, in this deal and, and to work closely with them on the coming months, on the, on the start uh, of those buses and on the uh, evolution that will be needed, of course, uh, over the next months. Sure. Um, I'd appreciate insight from both of you on what barriers you believe still exist in uh, out markets outside of Quebec in particular in facilitating adoption of technology of this kind and how can those barriers be overcome? Where do you see opportunities for change? The position price, the purchasing price is obviously the biggest obstacle that we have right now. And then what we're looking at is to have some kind of incentive programs and also legislation. It's a little bit of both. If you want to speed electrification of transportation, we need to have some you know, rules and, and legislation objectives to electrify, uh, you know, uh, public fleets, uh, industries like uh, the school bus industries and, and even uh, um, heavy duty transportation. Uh, and also have some incentives because to have the opportunity to reduce the price and uh, make sure that they were more competitive with um, diesel. And that's only for a small period of time. We think that, you know, if as volume grows, Electric will be just about the same price as diesel within five to six years from now. So, and then also any kind of incentives uh, that would help, you know, having longer contracts, longer routes, privileges on, on certain routes, uh, toll-free bridges, all of these little incentives that will also help uh, to speed thing, uh, uh, electrification. If there's any kind of financing where we could absorb the prices and then have that on a longer period of time. So, uh, you know, the payments per month are just, uh, you know, equal or, or close to um, uh, the diesel engine uh, buses. And then uh, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we get more and more uh, electric on the road because there's also some great impact on, on, on the environment. But that's really 
uh, the main uh, breaks that we're seeing right now. Pierre, do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, yes, sure. Uh, I, I mean, um, as an operator, uh, I, 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 I can tell you this. So first, electrification is a complex calculation that is different uh, from each country, from each mode of transport. If you're talking about school bus, uh, or if you're talking about transit, or if you're talking about school bus in North America, if you're talking about school bus in Europe, uh, it has nothing. In so the whole calculation is all about, uh, first, is it green to go electric? Um, uh, and uh, you will be maybe surprised that even in the states, uh, in the countries in the world that are producing electricity not as clean as Canada and Quebec, it's still very good for the environment, uh, especially locally to go electric. The second is subsidiaries. I think, Patrick, it's, I mean, it's it's perfectly true and valid in any country is that if the difference is too high between the two modes, you can't just uh, take the burden on your shoulder and then expecting to be able to deliver the service uh, with, with a massive uh, amount of capital or difference in money. Um, the third one is the manufacturer capabilities. Uh, uh, and uh, we, are, we are happy to have a lion here. Um, if you go in some countries, you do not have any manufacturers providing the service. So, um, I think the opportunities are related also to regulation. Uh, we've been through the, over the last 25 years in the whole world, we've been through stronger and stronger regulation on um, uh, emitting pollution um, in diesel and in gasoline. Uh, and this has increased the cost of purchase of standard vehicle, complexified the maintenance and so on. And I think that I agree with Patrick that we are close to the, the the, the balance, the automatic balance between what a, a, a future diesel with more constraints will, 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 will provide in terms of cost versus electric. Right? So I think the main barrier is, is, is a kind of uh, sometimes political decision on, on working uh, to see the long-term benefits because of course it's not, it's not, it can't be done in one week, right? I mean, uh, you have the grid, you have the power supply, you have a lot of stuff to think about to, to go to this electrification. But we are, it's around the corner. I mean, in, a, in, in school bus, it's not even around the corner for us, it's there. That's what we go for it. For the rest, you see a lot of evolution and test for transit, for example, it's around the corner, still a few years um, probably to make the difference. This has been excellent. Thank you both, very insightful and uh, congratulations to both sides on the arrangement. It's, uh, it's great to see progress in the uh, electrification space and in, in school buses. So thank you both for your time and for joining me today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tiffany. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Please hit subscribe so that you don't miss any updates from Electric Autonomy Canada.